Hey guys, it's Brandon from Pixel Planet Studios. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about scripting in After Effects. Now, if you're like me, you may have never gone into scripting other than to add maybe a wiggle expression to something. About a year ago, I was working with a sports team and bringing in information from Excel into After Effects. And the goal was to automate as many of the motion graphics as possible. And so scripting was a big part of that. But since then, what I've learned from scripting, I've brought into my everyday workflow. Scripting in After Effects is particularly useful on a long video where you might be doing the same task over and over or if you want a single checkbox, let's say, to change the properties of several different layers, or if you want to create an essential graphic to send to an editor. So let's take a look at five ways I've been able to incorporate scripting into my daily workflow. Here we have a text layer, and if I come up here and click on it, you'll see we've added a drop-down menu. And this has several different font variations, all of which are according to the brand guidelines for the client. But the cool thing about this is not just that we can set the different font variations, it's that when we set it to, let's say, thin, the outline around the text also gets thinner. Now, this isn't a huge time saver if you're doing it one time, but if you're duplicating this hundreds of times, it's a huge time saver, as well as, of course, you could send it to Premiere Pro and use it as an essential graphic. Let's go into another comp. And so here we have three names in text boxes. So I'm gonna start typing some names. So you see that we're about to run out of room. And of course, normally we would have to scale down the font size or the scale of this layer, but it automatically scales to the appropriate size. So I did this by looking at the size of the text layer and the size of the text box. And if the text layer exceeds the size of the text box, we scale it to the size of the text box divided by the size of the text layer. Here in another example, we have a character who's on the left-hand side of the screen. There's a pretend light source in the middle of the screen that casts the shadow to her left. But if we look at the animation, we see that she's looking to the left and talking to a character to screen left of her. So I'm going to now move her over to this side, but now we need to flip her shadow. So if we go into her comp, I've created a drop down here that quickly switches the shadow to the other side. And this creates this shadow at a different angle. It creates the shadow inside the circle at a different angle, and it even changes her animation. So you see she starts at about a 90 degree angle. But if she comes in on the left side with her shadow to the left, she'll actually start at the other angle. This next one is a simple type on title. And this is actually scripted to create this cursor as it types on and that the cursor changes to a different color. But we also use scripting to solve a common problem. So if this text layer and I'll type in some even longer text right here to make it obvious what we're doing. So if you center justify, you typically get the text coming from the center. And we want the text to start on the left-hand side. So we need to left justify the text while also centering the entire text at the end. So to do that, we've created a null that the text is parented to. And what the null does is looks at the width of the text and divides that by two, and then moves to the left horizontally in that position. And that allows the text, no matter how long it gets, to be left justified, but also centered on the screen. And here's one final example. You see we have a score of 100, and this background here is green, the graph is colored in green, and the graph goes up to 100%, as well as feedback of good because we did a good job getting 100%. And so let's watch this real quick. You can see it fills up to 100, 
according to the score that we've entered. So let's try to enter 75, okay? So now our score is average and the colors changed, the background numbers changed, how much it fills up to 75 has changed and we have a score, an average score here. And we can watch the animation and it works exactly the same. And one more time, we can try a score of 42 and you'll see it fills up to 42. And of course we have one, two, three, four, five things changing all at once. And they're all being driven with expressions from the number that we've entered. So these are a couple ways that you might use expressions in your workflow to help speed it up. If you have any questions about scripting and After Effects, feel free to leave those questions below or any topics you'd like us to cover and make sure to check out our other content and subscribe.